Hello, this is Steve with Pro Tools PC, and in this first part of a two-part video series, I wanted to look at syncing two Pro Tools systems with just a MIDI cable. To take it a step further, uh, it will be uh, syncing a Mac and a PC, so this will show you how you can combine the platforms, or you know, it'll be identical if you're connecting two Macs or if you're connecting two PCs. And to copy how I do it in the video, uh, we will need to download two files. We need Splashtop Personal and Splashtop Streamer, which will allow our video sharing between the Mac and the PC or two PCs, um, however you want to do that. Splashtop allows screen sharing over your local internal network, so no internet connection is needed, and the latency is gonna be better than, say, something like TeamViewer. So in this case, I am just directly connecting a network cable from one computer to the other, no crossover cable, nothing like that. And then on the second video, both MIDI sync and the video will be transported over that network cable. On your master system, which will be my PC in this video, you will install Splashtop Personal. The personal version is free and it will only screen share on your local network. On your slave system, which is the Mac in this video, you will install Splashtop Streamer. You will have to create an account and you will also have to log in when you launch Personal and Streamer, and the first time you may be required to approve the computer via an email. This may sound like a lot, but all in all, it was really quick, probably only a few minutes at the most. The only other subject in this case is how the computers connect. If it is a wireless network, it may be fine, really no way for me to know in your situation. But if they are connected together via a network cable or through a hub, it's always gonna be more reliable and the latency and everything just seemed uh, more solid that way. Now comes the fun part. Obviously, this would require two Pro Tools systems, two licenses, and two interfaces that are uh, MIDI capable, or you could even use like a cheap USB to MIDI converter on each system if you would like. Because we are using MTC, you could exchange another DAW software for Pro Tools on one end if you like. And the most important thing to remember is the master system will be using MIDI out and that will go to the MIDI in of the slave system. You'll also need audio connected from the slave system output to the input of the master, and you can do that any way you find suitable for your system. So in this video here, I'm using just an old uh, M-Audio Firewire 410 on the master system that has a MIDI in out. I'm just kind of using it just to show that, you know, any old interface can work if it's compatible. And I'm using an 11 rack on the MacBook. So let's look at our session setup windows. It's control and two on the number pad on PC, or you can come here under setup and go to session setup. And then on Mac, same thing. It's command and two on the number pad, or you can go here under setup and go down to session. So here, this is where you can verify sample rate, bit depth, you know, all that good stuff. Session start time, which is really important because you don't want different start times. Um, bit depth, you know, I don't, you know, it's really not going to be all that important. Sample rate, um, you could say it's situation dependent. Ultimately, I like to actually, uh, when I kind of get everything set on the remote system, I would just bounce it out of the remote system and then pull it into the master system. Now, the catch with doing that is, is if you got separate sample rates and you don't do a sample rate conversion on the import, um, it could play back slow, too fast, something like that. So ultimately for best practice, I do like them to match uh, both sample rate and bit depth. And again, the session start time is gonna be vitally important because you don't want different start times um, between the two sessions. And then again, for best practice, I would like the time code rate, feet frames, all that type of stuff to match as well between the two. 
So from here, once you get Pro Tools launched, um, you can have stuff set up, kind of ready to go, or you can do this in a completely empty session. It doesn't matter. But as I mentioned earlier, we are using MTC, a uh, MIDI time code. So we need to set up the systems to both uh, generate MTC on the master system and to read MTC on the slave system. So both systems here under setup, uh, then you can go to peripherals and the default window is synchronization. Here under synchronization, we have two options. We have MTC reader port and we have the MTC generator port. The master system will be the generator, the slave system will be the reader. So on each system, you need to select the MIDI device of that particular system that is connected to the MIDI cable. So the master here will have its MTC generator port set to its MIDI interface, which is the Firewire 410. Click OK, and then over here on the MacBook, under setup, uh, go to peripherals. MTC reader port will be set to its MIDI device, which is the 11 rack external. Now we have the system actually enabled to generate and read MTC, but now we need to actually enable it within the session. So here on the slave system, we need to turn on wait for sync, which is the little clock button here on the transport. And after you push it, it will show down here in the bottom left corner, waiting for sync, and that's Command J on Mac, Control J on PC for a quick key. Then here on the master system, we need to turn on generate MTC. And then if you don't see it right there, you can hit your drop down and select synchronization. And then over here on the main transports, you can hit the drop down over here to see it along the toolbar. At this point, you should be good to go. Um, let me pull both screens in here to make this um, a little easier to show what's going on. And let's hit playback. So we can see right away that that worked, but obviously the next concern is latency since we can hear the flamming between the two click tracks. The next concern is the chase time between the two systems. When you hit play, you can hear it takes a second or two for the slave to actually respond and start playing back. So you have to be sure to give yourself a couple seconds or bars before the start to give it time to actually chase and sync up. So first, I guess we should address the flamming between the two systems, the um, actual latency between them. And the best way to do that is the way we take care of um, check out most latency values is to record a click track and measure. My ultimate advice is to actually go a step further and here on the slave system, let's print the click track. So let's go here to commit and let's check out the settings. Everything looks good. Uh, source track and yeah, let's just leave it and just hit okay. And there we have our printed click track. And that is just to minimize the risk of anything being weird with the click that I'm sure some of us have recognized from time to time. So let's record a few bars of the click into the master system. And the way I like to have this set up is be up here on grid on bars and beats. And you wanna be sure you are, hold on, let me extend this out here a little bit so we can see it. And you wanna be sure that you are set on at least quarter notes because that is what the click is gonna play back at. Okay, and let's verify here real quick that tab to transient is turned on. So let's click in the grid here and hit the tab key. And then what I like to do is just hold down shift and click on the grid line. 
And then if we go up here, um, we can change our view from bars and beats to samples. And then we can get our amount of latency right here in this case, which is 618 samples. And then from here, I will do that in a couple spots just to kind of see if there's any fluctuation or if there's kind of an average, if things are close. Um, you know, just looking for patterns, anything like that to try to find um, the most accurate reading of the amount of latency. So 618 seems to be our average amount of latency going around there. So let's delete all of this since we don't need it anymore. So let's go to setup and we'll click on it. And then we will come down here to preferences. Uh, default is typically display, but obviously I was on the MIDI page last time I closed it down. So let's go back into the MIDI tab again. And here under global MIDI playback offset is where we want to enter the value of samples that we had measured uh, that we will be using for the offset amount. And in this case, we determined that was 618 samples. So we can hear instantly that it sounds a lot better than what it did earlier, uh, previously before we set the offset value. So from here, I have uh, two terrible MIDI loops. Um, I put together one on each system. And like I mentioned previously, we wanna give ourselves at least a bar or more to kinda let the systems um, chase and sync with each other. Another bit of advice is that I'll actually let the click play back for that uh, bar ahead of where everything kicks in, or at least a few hits. Um, and after, on the other side of this playback, I'll show you what we're going to do with that. Yes, it's a terrible loop, I'm well aware. So let's go ahead and zoom in. So as we can see here, you can still see between the grid line and the audio, they're still not lined up. So what that's telling us is that the global MIDI offset is actually affecting playback of the master system and offsetting it. It's not offsetting the incoming audio. So basically at this point, what we need to do is actually trim and um, nudge the audio back. So at this point, what I would say to do is just again, tab to transient, get to uh, the front of one of the clicks, cut it and delete everything um, in the front and drag it back onto the grid line. And then I would go through and check a couple other spots, make sure everything looks okay. And then let's start playback. Whoops, we gotta get rid of the input here. Then what I would also say at this point is if you decide to come back, record some more in, something like that, I usually like to double check the, um, the global offset amount. So, you know, record some click back in, measure it again, because I sometimes have seen stuff, you know, fall off a little bit after different passes. And another thing to note is that uh, different interfaces will also um, give different latency values. Um, I'm assuming a lot of that has to do with the driver, the quality of the driver, things like that. So, you know, if you go switching interfaces in this, if you normally say get 618 samples with one interface, you go to another interface, it could be quite a bit less. So, um, just be aware that it will fluctuate between interfaces.
I hope you found the video helpful. Um, the next video will be similar, except we'll be syncing two systems with just a network cable, and it will be a Mac and a PC again as well. And uh, any questions, comments, anything like that, feel free to contact us on our website. Thank you. Mm -hmm.